Dark Crusade cemented Dawn of War as one of the best RTS games of the mid-2000s, and Relic Entertainment felt it safe to start development of a full-blown sequel. But with its popularity at its peak, THQ wanted to release a third expansion and set the task to another studio known as Iron Law. When Soulstorm dropped, I remember losing interest with it very quickly. The new content didn't hook me at all, and at the time I was more interested in the tabletop game. And it's because of the tabletop my reaction to Soulstorm's announcement was, Please be Tyranids, please be Tyranids, please be Tyranids, please be- Dark Eldar and Sisters of Battle, okay. Yet it was infamously polarizing to Dawn of War fans, and as someone who never sunk too much time into it, I'm curious to rediscover for myself what all the fuss was about. Oh, hold on, something isn't right here. Is that just a Dark Crusade? I think it is. Well, if it is, and I'm more than happy to talk about the stuff I left out in the last video, and... Oh, bollocks. The box art leads me to a little observation. The game is named after an ability for the Dark Eldar, but the Sisters of Battle are front and center. I guess they're a lot easier to sell than what looks like a BDSM mod for Morrowind, but there's not even reverse cover art like before, so we must banish it into the realm of normal packaging. Oh god! A dim battlefield sees two scattered armies battling to the last, and given the race is chosen, they seem like prime targets for the Dark Eldar to swoop in and slaughter. Instead, the Sisters of Battle shoot a dinosaur in the face and trod over the corpses of their comrades. Um, Grimdark? I always found the tower weird choice of opponent, seeing how the chamber militant of the witch hunters is fighting a race which doesn't have a clue what magic is. Did you like the governor from Dark Crusade? Because that's him they kill off. Nothing worth getting upset over though, I mean it's not like he was anywhere as cool as Stern. <laughs> I'll miss you, General Stern! There's not much more to say about the intro though, it's quite cut and dry, and it lacks something thematically, which hopefully isn't a sign of what's to come. Karava is your average star system, with a thinly spread defense force and an orc infestation problem. But when an unnatural, otherworldly phenomenon called a warp storm suddenly appears, the Space Marines of the Blood Ravens chapter arrive to defend the Doom Planets, setting up shop in an old secluded fortress. The Renegade Alpha Legion use the chaotic warp storm to their advantage, their leader pursuing his dreams of demonhood in various law-bending ways, while the ever-expansive Tau come to study the strange storm and build a big gun on the moon. On the moon! The Ruckus awakens a tomb of Necrons from their rather lengthy catnap under the desert, who decide to pick up their old hobby of wiping out all life in the galaxy. Just like Grandma. In response, the Eldar Craft World Orthway assembles an army to stop the Necrons once again, because, let's be honest, most of the other options aren't very reliable. Meanwhile, the Dark Elder prepare to plunder the system from their weary foes and strike fear and dread into their hearts by challenging them to a fair one-on-one -on -one fight. Huh. Finally, the Imperial Ecclesiarchy, not content with two massive armies already making planet fall, sends the Sisters of Battle to cleanse the entire Caravan system in fire. Lots of fire. Oh yeah, the Imperials are all fighting each other again, since they're either insane, incompetent, or just hold a grudge for Dark Crusade. If Dark Crusade's story was taking a backseat before, Soulstorms has probably jumped into the boot of the car and... later found buried in the desert. It's a little disappointing how elementary it is, and I think even if the warbands and clans were swapped out, it wouldn't feel quite so copy-paste. But while Soulstorms' story may be lacking, there's also a strange lack of it. There's no cutscene for each faction, nothing fleshing out the commanders, they don't even share the banter between one another and strongholds, which made for some of the best bits of Dark Crusade. But this would have been fine, honestly, since the campaign underneath is what matters most to me, but if it makes impeding gameplay changes as well, then- Welcome to the single player campaign of- And Dark why can't Dark I turn Dark this Dark off by default? Soulstorm has this weird Jekyll and Hyde development, where half the time it wants to pursue the growth of the last games or wildly rework solid mechanics, and the rest trying to stay as safe as possible. With Soulstorm shifting the battle from one planet to four, the map screen has to make a lot of compromises to accommodate the four planets, but needlessly shrinks important information more than it needs to. I think it loses the intuition and clarity of Dark Crusade's board game map. Your commander was your piece, as you moved around the map, you build a hotel on Victory Bay, and it just works. Soulstorm scattered dots, dashes, and crisscross lines make it look more like one of those rebel base computers covered in skittles. Or mastermind. What kind of board game is this? The abilities which used to be in special maps are now unlocked from strongholds, with each race starting with theirs Mega Man style. The permanent base mechanic from Dark Crusade is now gone and Honor Guard units are made much more expensive this time, which means it's very much possible to sit through the same skirmish three or four times as resources trickle in, and combined with having to destroy every building rather than just the HQ, it drags on to the point of tedium. The commander upgrades return and range from pretty standard to goofy looking as hell, which I know 40k is full of, but this is just... Weird. No, turned it sideways. 
That's a kill shot! Some variety is added with Take and Hold missions, which I think was a great idea to break up some monotony. And these provinces let you travel from planet to planet via webway gates. Um, presumably the warp storm is making space travel impossible, despite there being bonuses that let ships travel through the warp storm, and most races got here through ships, and why is this plot device even here? Each of the new maps are based on the four distinct planets and their moons. Sim City, Vietnam, a giant fucking Dorito, and CHAOS PLANET! I like a lot of the maps on Carver 2 and 4, and I've got a bit of a soft spot for the moon base map. But it's clear some corners were cut in the asset department, and I can't say I was thrilled to reach Carver 3 and stare at a big slab of orange for several hours. Then we get to the Stronghold, where Soulstorm swivels anywhere from lethargic to batshit insane. Cinematics are far less refined, sometimes with a complete lack of background audio or hilarious lazy use of AI. And then there's all the backdrop info. The Tau's eco-friendly mega cannon, the Chaos Lord's hilarious rants about shrines and magic, the Imperial Guard shipping a hundred bane blades of the system, and... I just realised what I said. First of all, when has the Imperium ever had a hundred bane blades in the same place? And second of all, how did they get them sent to a- Battle Brothers! Uh, oh, yeah, and the Space Marine Commander is- Space Marines, today the enemy is at our door. We know our duty and we will do it. We fight for our honor as Blood Ravens, as Space Marines, and we fight in the name of the Emperor! What kind of direction did it take to get that delivery from the same man who voiced Sindri, the Demon Prince, Davian Thule, the Guardsmen, the Sergeants, the Baneblade, and pretty much the entire game? Despite that, everyone's made out to be really one-dimensional, and even returning characters lack the writing nor even the right voice to bring back the same charm. And why is every character made out to be dumb as a brick? These foolish armies know nothing of strategy. If an army approached, surely we would see it coming. Whoopsie daisy, half our stronghold's been taken over by a bunch of guardsmen and we didn't notice. Mm -hmm. To real, you fucking idiot! Why did you position our headquarters right next to the fallen modern guy that would feed our soul to the god we've been actively trying to avoid for thousands of years? I fucking hate you, to real! Well, shit. It seems the aims of Soulstorm Strongholds were to be easier to attempt but harder to finish, which I think was the right idea, but they hit most of the problems Dark Crusade managed to avoid. Previous Strongholds started out with a heavy initial attack followed by smaller waves as you built up your base, while secondary objectives would reap extra benefits and make your efforts to push forward easier. Soulstorm's waves are more gradual but get a lot harder, and with secondaries now throwing high-tier units at your base, they become less of a rewarded convenience and more of a necessity. Some missions will constantly bombard your HQ and damage your builders in the blast, others will put up invulnerable barriers which sometimes require tackling day-to-day -day iron spawning. The Imperial Guard Stronghold will spawn units inside your base while your army's been moved forward because the level design encourages you to do that. And because there are Baneblade convoys mounting pressure of building constant relic units, it forces you to either face units you're not equipped to fight or continuously spawn camp the closest structure. These are what the convoys look like. Just... Space Marine Rhinos with no animation. Gliding along their merry way. Metal boxes. I like how some strongholds start you out without a base as a throwback to missions of old, but most of Soulstorm's new ideas are borderline cheap. It's clear it wasn't finished before launch, and time constraints and level oversights make it an optimal strategy to do things like this. Without the crossroads of Cronus and enemies tied up on what amounts to giant space islands, the best way to get around the higher costs of Honor Guard is to do nothing. This would almost be funny if I was a Dark Eldar. And that's my biggest issue with Soulstorm. Most of the time, it's just... Boring. A to B progression is needlessly elongated, stronghold levels become frustrating slugfests, and it lacks the polish to be engaging or the pace to be entertaining. Being able to suck all the energy out of all of this action is almost impressive. Which is why, if you want its better qualities, you're better off sticking to the skirmish mode. Starting alphabetically, the Dark Eldar are a race of pirate slavers, metaphorically on the run from the Dark God whom they, they spawned. spawned with their, their unrestrained, unquantifiable murder fucking! Along with sporting more spikes in the punk rock band than a dodgy nightclub, the Dark Elder have a similar emphasis to their counterparts, with fast skimmer vehicles and specialist troops. What I like is that they have a larger emphasis on what stealth and speed than the Eldar, and I feel more inclined to use such tactics with vehicles like the Raider Transport, which lets infantry ride shotgun. They lack the defensive options of other races, but do have units of strong mobility and damage output, and can harvest souls from corpses to grant access to special abilities. 
Unfortunately, I think it hinders the Dark Elder by design more than helping it, by locking off some basic functionalities to make the soul system seem more useful. Things like detector units aren't available until tier 2, which becomes problematic when playing against armies with plenty of infiltrators. And it comes across as additional micromanagement rather than a natural mechanic to the race's playstyle. Meanwhile, the sisters of battle are an army of elite, zealous, and practically incorruptible warriors, with arguably one of the goofiest yet coolest visual designs in the game. Their tenacity to purge the wicked is largely characterised with more fire weapons than anyone deems sensible, so their strengths largely come down to anti-infantry and close-range anti-tank options. The sisters feel like a middle ground between the Space Marines and Imperial Guard, which makes them quite easy to pick up and play for me, and makes them formidable opponents to face. The sisters also have faith abilities used by a resource gained from certain upgrades, which I might be completely alone on this, should have just been standard abilities. With the Necrons and Tau being so different from the previous races, I think Iron Law felt they needed the next two races to be as unique as possible to live up to expectations. To me though, the Soul and Faith mechanics feel gimmicky, and I reckon they should have either built the races around their principal strengths like the Imperial Guard were, or just added a race unique by default. In 2008, Games Workshop were pushing airborne units as a new piece for their tabletop game, and with Dawn of War's influence on Warhammer's popularity, THQ requested they were added to Soulstorm. However, only one was added for each race. They should have been saved for a sequel, an entire extra dimension to battles with bombers and interceptors and transports, not just lightweight tanks that can pass over cover, which we already had. The Tau's Flyer is extremely solid, and the Hell Talon gives Chaos a much-needed extra vehicle unit, but the rest of them feel like a waste of vehicle cap, and even new level designs seem to reject them. I can commend the new races and units for their production value, though, and the new maps are a healthy addition. The models are well-made, effects and animation are decent, and their voice acting is passable, even if their lines are a bit too long. In fact, it feels like this was where all the production time went into, and everything else was either rushed or an afterthought. Thankfully, an improvement Soulstorm does bring is much better balancing than Dark Crusade. The Necrons aren't OP anymore! The Chaos Gods. No! I changed my mind! There's a few more minute changes across the other races, though the Tau and Eldar are still the Meta Knights of Dawn of War, but everyone's experience with the new races seems to vary wildly. From what I've seen, the Dark Eldar don't seem very impressive, which I think stems from problems with adding a race that canonically avoids direct conflict, but I wouldn't be surprised if I'm proven wrong by a good player online. The Sisters of Battle seem solid overall, though they lack a decent melee unit until Tier 3, and I find it a nice coincidence that they have a guard, a marine's arsenal of numbers, but lack the versatility and toughness. Keep them at arm's reach if you're playing the guard. If they bring the pipe organs, bust out the 1812. Dark Crusade was a big thing to live up to. The sheer amount they added in the time span they did still baffles me. To some, that expectation alone would have doomed Soulstorm to fail. But I think it's the fact they tried to play it safe and up the ante that brought it down, hitting neither quality but encountering both their problems. Iron Lord trying to reinvent the spokes of a wheel which only really needed its tyres changed, and somewhere down the line the story managed to be both insipidly cookie cutter and the wildest contortion of 40k canon from a video game. But after all the doom and gloom, it's worth noting that at the end of the day, it is still Dawn of War. All the qualities of its skirmish mode are still there, and it also has the widest selection of fan-made mods available, which, after many requests, I will be covering a handful of mods in a dedicated video once I finish Retribution. It's worth noting Soulstorm's got some technical issues the others don't though, and despite bug fixes and performance tweaks, my frame rate was dropping pretty hard throughout. Overall though, I think the game is a dead center 5 out of 10. It's less of a bad sequel and more of an unnecessary one, and I don't think it's as irredeemable as some make it out to be, but it never really hooked me in like the others did for several reasons. Dark Crusade is by far the better game overall, but if you poured hundreds of hours into its skirmish mode and want to spice things up, or if you really don't care for campaigns, feel free to pick it up when it's cheap. It wouldn't be long before everyone turned their heads to the next game on the horizon though, Dawn of War 2, a game that was really going to revolutionize the game's formula. Would it change for better or worse? Would it meet its expectations, and would it cause a bigger divide and debate than Dawn of War Soulstorm? Well, I look forward to finding out next time.